I'm here at Beef. That's Jeff Gerard. I like our song. We're talking about your family's finances, getting out of debt, managing money, planning for the future. What is that all about when you're trying to, oh, I don't know, figure out life? So many folks today, you know, we talk about retirement as, as kind of a, a destination or really a place. But I think really you got to think about two things. It's a lifelong preparation. And it's not so much a retirement plan as if you sit there and, and you, uh, you know, a moment comes and poof, you're retired. It's a little bit different. Uh, I was telling somebody just recently, I, I was a, uh, you know, Los Angeles policeman for many years. I remember it took me six months to get in the academy. And from that time, six months while you're in the academy. So a year later from the time I took the test, the first test, I was actually in a locker room. Wow. And here I am sitting there. And the guy three three lockers away comes in and all he does is complain that he can't wait. He has three years left on the job and he's out of here. This is amazing. I can't believe it. The, the system has changed. You know, he did the old back in my day, kid. And that kind of thing really changed a lot of my perspective when I thought, oh, my gosh, what did I just do? Sure. I mean, this is something that probably took a couple of years uh, in preparation. And then that year and from the time that you went to the academy until you actually got on the force. And then that's kind of like letting a little bit of the, the wind out of your sail, I would say. I mean, looking at somebody that's, you know, what you'd call a, a lifer or somebody that's had a long career yeah. in this field. You're looking up and aspiring to hopefully be like them one day, grab some, you know, fruits <laughs> off the wisdom tree, you know, and you say, okay, what can you tell me? And they're like, man, I can't wait to get out of here. It was scary. That's it, rough. It was a tough time for me because I had to think about, oh my gosh, I just committed, uh, you know, when you're, 21 a year of your life is a long time right i remember thinking i just graduated college my job is to figure out what i want to do i thought i figured it out and here and he wasn't the only one it was everybody wanted to get out because oh, it was wow. it was before the rodney king incident but it was still during a tough time when you know just like now i don't think there's ever been a good time to say yeah i want my child to be in law enforcement the world loves you and everybody's going to treat you well right it has to be a calling it has to be something that draws you to that well, that career lasted about uh, 10 years, 11 years, and then ultimately uh, I retired after a big car accident. So some of you know that, but maybe some of you don't know that the reason I chose financial services is because in my mid-20s I, I was taken in a couple of scams. Oh. In fact, three different scams and frauds, and they took most of my money, and I had to start over. So that was 22 years ago that I switched careers, if you will, and created a financial life that, that really drove down the way of keeping people from being ripped off, keeping people from feeling like they are being scammed, or at least they don't know what they're doing. Look, a lot of the financial products out there, they're not scams or frauds in the sense of, uh, you know, there's a guy with a trench coat and a, you know, a beanie or a hoodie and a, a yeah. you know, pistol, a sidearm. These are men and women dressed in professional attire. They have really nice business cards. You go to their office, they have marble on the floor. So it must be good. Sure. Dark yeah. woods on the, s on the walls. So there is a period of time in your life when you're trying to figure out what does it take to trust somebody? Who do I trust? So I'm not saying that, that it's that kind of a scam, but what I am saying is something you need to pay attention. Is there are products and services out there that you have no idea what they really are? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I think a big part of what we're looking at is people get – down a road in their retirement planning or their saving, whatever their journey is for saving money so that they can stop trading their time one day for money, right? And they're going to live off of their the money that they've saved. I can't tell you how many times I hear someone say, gosh, Eric, I've been saving and saving and saving. It just doesn't seem like my account is going up much in value. I mean, I hear everybody talking about, you know, hitting home runs and getting all these rates of return in the market, but why is my account not really going up as quickly as I'd like it to? Here's a lady that uh, I met with yesterday. So I always try to bring you a real-life example. This was li uh, literally yesterday's account, 11.50 in the morning, so about the same time we made a phone call. And my job isn't to tell you if something is good or bad or to sell or to buy. That's not my job, and I don't think that should be any financial professional's job unless they spend enough time with you, unless it's their money, right? So my job is to just collect the information let you hear the same data, the same information that I hear. It's not uh, you know, some sort of secret conversation. And then you make a decision. So here's a good example. Yesterday around this time, we called a company. I won't give you their name yet. Uh, client had put in February in 2013. She had deposited about $81,000. 81000 Okay. 
That's the original amount that she put in. In the last, uh, what is that, five years or so, five and a half years, she had taken out about 8,000. Okay, so she withdrew 8,800 to be exact. All right. So now when she withdrew 8,800, we said, all right, well, what's the value today? She put in 81. It's worth 86. So 5,000 plus 8,000. So in the last five and a half years, she has earned a total, when you take out what she had already put, she took out and earned a total of about $13,400 in interest. All right, 13,000, it's not bad, it's not great, it's not horrible, but it's okay. How much in fees, right? Because you bought something, what did you receive? So with this variable annuity, this account, $16,970 in fees. So we're going to round, we're going to give everybody the benefit of the doubt here. She paid fees of about 17000 She made thirteen. Now, if you don't see that as a problem, then I've got a bridge to sell you in <laughs> Lake Havasu called, what is it, the London Bridge? <laughs> because you have to understand. Now, listen, she still made thirteen. In other words, it's not the total account probably made well, if we do the math, uh, maybe $30,000. She made 30. The account generated 30,000. She got to keep 13. The broker, financial company, whoever, got to keep 17. Who worked for this money? Who didn't show up to their kid's baseball game or showed up late to their daughter's recital or, or wasn't there for every single evening dinner because they had to work overtime or work late? I'm all right if you work hard and you receive something for it. What I don't like, if you work hard, you receive something for it. A broker who was in an elementary school when, when you were earning that money, because this lady is 61 years old, the broker was in elementary school. We did the math. We looked backwards. We saw who it was when she was making this money. So drive by an elementary school and look around and say, someday that little kid, while I'm sacrificing and that kid is running around a playground, that child is going to make more money on my retirement account than I am. When does that, why is that okay? So, Arif, what do you guys do? Because somebody said this the other day. They said, Arif, we're not really clear on what you do. We know what you don't do. All right, so what do we do? We use safety. That means we use fixed accounts or fixed indexed annuities or fixed savings types of accounts where we earn tax-free or tax-deferred money, right? Just uh, similar to IRAs, just like an IRA. We do IRAs. We do Roth retirement accounts, Roth IRAs. And our goal is to defer interest or, in some cases, to delay it completely for a long time, the taxes on that interest, I should say, so that you're earning interest every single month, every single year. If the account goes up, great, you earn some interest. If not, it doesn't go down. That's it. We're never going to make you rich. Any financial professional who tells you this is the account that's going to make you rich, you have to ask yourself, really? Why is it? that I have an account and a broker that says he's going to make me rich when he's still working. If he's that smart, just make yourself rich. I, I, I mean, I get it, but why are you... So be careful when you trust these people. We have more than half of folks that are in their 60s say they're going to delay retirement. Do you think if this lady's account went up... For us, it probably wouldn't have gone up 30000 It might have gone up maybe twenty, twenty-five. All right, just for an example. So she would go up twenty or twenty-five thousand, and not thirteen. Because it's like driving with your foot on your brake, and the and the gas. Here's what I have learned in the financial world: a lot of financial professionals will use interest rates, percentages, one percent, one and a half, one point three, one point five, when it's in their interest. Because you look at it, you go, hey, you know, one percent is not a bad number. I'll take it. One and a half. Oh, that's pretty good. I only pay one percent. <clears throat> then do the math and go backwards and say, how much is that in dollars? Because you do not spend interest rates at the grocery store. You spend dollars. So don't let the financial world try to trick you and use dollars when it's appropriate and interest rates when it's not. Always compare apples to apples. In other words, across the board. If I'm always talking interest rates, talk interest rates. If I'm always talking dollars, talk dollars. Because when they change those numbers, and it's often subconscious, and I'm not even saying they're bad people. It's, this is their job, right? A, a person who works at the Ford dealership isn't a bad person trying to sell you a Ford. 
because that's their job. A person who sells air conditionings, uh, air conditioners, that's their job, right? So I want a heater. Well, I'm selling air conditioners today. We sell safety. You want it? That's what we do. If you don't, that's okay. You could take a chance and maybe earn a lot more interest than what we can offer. But we never go backwards. Those are a couple of the catches, a couple of the trade-offs. Well, I think the biggest differentiator from what you don't do and what you do, Arif, is that in this example, this person, yes, they had a chance to make a lot more in interest, but you, they won't see the fees with your accounts. The other thing is, would they rather have 30000 that can be taken away in risk or fees with a market correction or keep that twenty or twenty five, and once it's credited, they can never, ever have that taken away from them? I think that's the question you have to ask yourself. Are the risk and fees worth uh, – you know the, the the opportunity in this account. So, some of the trade-offs with your accounts, the fixed and fixed index accounts, you're not going to see those same type of features. Take a look at this, guys. With a, a new study from CNBC, they're telling us this. They're saying that with the market being at all-time highs, you know, every once in a while it flirts with it. Right now, I think we're pretty darn close. Again, with the market being at all-time highs, why is it that 53 percent, more than half? are going to postpone retirement. With nearly all of them, 40%, right, 4 out of 10, are saying that they're going to have to work till age 70. Now, I want you to stay busy. Come to my office and say that you have enough money to retire. And I'll say, okay, great, but what are you going to do next week? I go, what do you mean? What's your purpose? you got to have something to do. I think you need to have somebody that's counting on you to be there, somebody who, who appreciates you and wants you to show up and is worried if you're not there. We all need that. You've seen that, Jeff. Sure, sure. And and I think it's even more so important when somebody spends 25, 30, 35 years in one field, that career in so many cases will define a person and that becomes who they are. You say, well, what do you do? Oh, and then they say, I am A, and then they fill in the blank of whatever they do as an occupation, but that's who they are. That's what they identify with. And then tomorrow, wait, I'm, I'm not that person anymore? That's right. That's rough. I remember when I worked... Uh, worked at a place and they, they had to, your name in magnets, right? So today you're working this, yeah. when I was a policeman, we worked, I worked out of Devonshire at one point. Okay, you work in this car, you're working with this person, you're working here. And so you always looked at your magnet, where am I working today, what, what am I doing? Yeah. And I remember going back there after I'd left a few months, they'd already switched it out, different people were there. I knew most of the people, but there were different people. And I inherently turn my head to look at the board to see where I was working, knowing, right, oh, wow. knowing that I hadn't been there and worked there for, for months. And you just take a quick look and you go, wait, I, I don't see myself. Oh, wait a second. I'm not supposed to see myself. It is, there, there's, a very, there's very few opportunities where it's more in your face than, hey, by the way, you don't work here anymore. They change technologies very quickly these days. Leave a company, leave an industry, and try to come back in a year or two or three or four. The software is different. The people are different. So you have to plan and prepare ahead of time. And if you do so, and you, you're one of those blessed few, few that uh, can retire in their 50s, right, that's a great thing, but still have something to do. I remember financially, uh, we were pretty comfortable in my early 30s, and I thought, okay, so that's it. I've got 50 years of just being a consumer, <laughs> just taking things, just existing. And at first you think, oh, I'm going to play golf, I'm going to sleep in, I'm going to swim in the pool, I'm going to take my kids to the zoo on a Tuesday, whatever you want to do. And then when you do all of those things, you look around and you say, okay, that's it. Because we associate our value, right or wrong, we associate our value with what we do because of exactly what you were saying, Jeff. Hey, what do you, what do, you do? I do this. No, no, no. I am this yeah and that is a change a lot of other cultures don't do that of that's course right. that's the reason we invented everything of the 20th century <laughs> you know <laughs> i love it when people say oh you know europe is so much more advanced yeah they have electricity thank you united states yeah. oh they have uh, automobiles well uh, yeah i guess bmw did invent it but thank you henry ford <laughs> united states yeah. oh that computers the internet surgical techniques processes and on and on. So the rest of the world benefits from the mindset, the work ethic, the integrity of the United States. 
Well, no wonder we want to retire so early. We're doing the most. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the work. <laughs> you go there. What was it? Remember in Europe, they uh, or was it Greece? They rioted a few years ago mm. because they couldn't retire. Mm. Like they changed the retirement age. I'm going to be off a little bit, but I think it was from 58 to 60. Wow. And they said, uh, you know, we're raising the retirement age two years. Oh, my God. There was riots in the streets. People were throwing things. And if you've ever been to any Mediterranean country, generally speaking, but certainly Greece, you realize that they work very little anyway. It's, not, it's a very lazy affair. It's like, yeah, well, tomorrow, hey, we'll do that after siesta. We'll do that in the morning. And America wants it done yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Imagine when you go there and you live with an American or you travel. <laughs> and you say, I'd like to get this done. And yeah, we'll get it done in the morning. They just didn't tell you which morning. That's right. Friday morning, <laughs> not, not today. <laughs> Not oh, you meant this Friday? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I go back on some of the stories you've shared. Or if, you know, people retiring, we're in such a hurry to retire, we run the risk of two things. Number one, that you'll be the youngest person in your fam group of family or friends uh, retiring, which means who, if nobody else can afford to do that, who are you going to hang out with, right? That was a big part problem with us. It's, it's like we came out and said, who wants to go and who wants to do? And, hey, yeah. we have discount tickets, too, and. Nobody was there. Yeah. And then the other thing is you put uh, sometimes an undue amount of stress on your retirement savings. If you work for 30 years and you plan to take money out for 50 years, you better have saved a lot of money and or gotten a pretty good rate of return and continue to get that to spend that type of money. So that's where that challenge is. It's not always in the accumulation. Sometimes it comes in the distribution or the taking the money from the accounts because that's, I think, just as an important formula when it comes to seeing how much you can actually live on for retirement. You know, a lot of times people forget that the plan of withdrawal is more important than the plan of accumulation. Because in the plan of withdrawal, there isn't a plan B. In the accumulation, you can work longer. Right. In the accumulation, you can get a second job. In the accumulation, you can save more out of your paycheck. Those things don't exist when you are retired and you're earning income. The only option is to live on less. And so when I tell you, when I spoke yesterday to this client and we had a chance to go over her account and she said, what do you mean 3.59% in fees? The amount of fees that she was being charged was so high that in her particular case, she had no other choice. She said, Arif, do you realize I'm 60 years old, 61. How much longer do I have to work before this account becomes 100,000? Because I put in 81. If you add the 8,000 in there, 8,800, it's fine. It's about 89, 90. How much longer is it going to take to get to 100,000? Another 10 years, five years? Sheesh. So, well, I don't know, but I do know that no matter what, you're going to be paying 3.59. Every, now, look, some of you say this, and here's what happens. When we were going through, we just had a checklist. We're just asking questions. That's it. We're not doing any kind of analysis. It doesn't take that. I, I, don't, I don't think you need an analysis and a 15-page financial needs analysis formula in six meetings of two hours each and for you to say, okay, how much did I put in? How much did I pay in fees? And how much did I make? Yes, but you understand the square root of the... Look, all of that fancy words, they're designed for Wall Street, the brokerage world, to cover their CYA, right? Because they've been sued. So lawyers write it so that lawyers can read it. And you're not a lawyer, most of you. And what that means also is when they make... They give you these things every quarter or every 13 months, prospectuses or... four. You're not, you don't, they know you don't understand that stuff, right? I think it should be as plain and simple. If I take money out, do I pay a fee? If I put money in, do I pay a fee? If it stays there, do I pay a fee? Now, if the answer is yes, and I question it or I want to know more, then you can tell me what I get for it, and I can say yes, it's worth it or no, it isn't. But don't think it's something where you're sitting down trying to create a plan for somebody as a financial professional and they're going to teach you to become them, right? That, that's not their job. No. 
And I think it, it goes back to what I've said in the past is it's all in the questions that you ask. When you're looking at an account and you're assessing it or a, a plan or a program, whatever someone's putting in front of you as a, as a prospective offer to say, we're going to put your money in this account, what do you think? Go back to, the, to your gut. What can I expect to make? What am I paying in fees? But don't play the word game. If I say fee and I didn't use the right word because there's still an expense, a charge, or a cost that I didn't ask about, that's, that's kind of sneaky. Yeah, so here's what it was. She said the administrative fee was $50 a year. Oh. And the client thought that's, that's all she was paying. So she looked at me, and she smiled and kind of nodded and said, oh, you know, the I told you so. Okay. <laughs> and but because the account is more than $75,000, there is no fee. Oh. And she went, see that? I said, great. What's the M&E fee? The client looked at me, furred her brow, and kind of cocked her head sideways. What's the M&E charge, the M&E fee? So, oh, that's 1.3%. Oh, what's the sub-account fee? And the lady says, oh, we use 1.11. Okay. <laughs> I said, uh, I see that there's a rider on this. Can you tell me what the rider cost is? She said, oh, the rider is 0.99. Now, if you're quick and you're doing the math, you're like, hey, I don't think that's coming in at 3.59. No, no, no. 0.99 on the $102,000. Where'd that number come from? That's not real numbers. It's not your real money. You can't take it out. It's not yours. It's used as a formula. So the 0.99 is on an account that is much larger, which means you're really not paying. Right? If I say, you're going to pay me 5%, and you say, well, good, my account is 100000 That's a lot of money. I go, no, no, no. It's 5% on 10 times your account number. It's not 5% anymore, is it? So you see the extreme to, l to meet, meet the example here. Ask them, how are you charging fees? Better yet, come into our office. I don't, there's no fee to meet with me. There's no cost. If we can help you, the companies will pay us. Right? We are paid by the company's profits, not from your account, not if you deposit $10,000. Does it, does it come from your bucket? Not like the other products, some of the other products out there. If you put money in with us, that's what's in there. That's what grows. That's the account. So keep this in mind that our objective is to help you get reasonable rates of return. Zero to 10, zero to 12 percent. That's probably right where you're going to be. On average, three, four, five, six. That's it. Today, one of the, the biggest stock pickers of the S&P 500 and one of the, the greatest analysis was talking on uh, CNBC and he said, Expect the stock market to bring in about 6% this year. Hmm. Okay. Isn't that interesting? We get 3 to 6. So maybe it will do a little bit better than us. And if it does, is it okay, the fees and the risk? Is it okay that you pay that? And you, you have to deal with the risk. If it's okay, then fantastic. But you understand it, it never does the average. Nothing does the average. It goes up and down and up and down. Right? I think the... Uh, just to illustrate the point, I'm going to be off again on the numbers because I, I wasn't thinking about this, but Michael Jordan himself says his average, I think, was 21 points a game. And when you look historically, he never did 21 points a game. <laughs> he did 18, he did 30, but the average was 21 points. So the idea is we just need to see kind of a pattern of behavior and look to yourself and see where you are. All right, we're going to take a quick break, guys. We're going to come back in just a minute. I'm Eric Fallaby. That's Jeff Gerard, and you're li listening to the Total Financial Hour on your place for news, talk, and information. This is your hometown station, KHTS. Remember when you and your sweetheart would go ice skating, gliding across the ice hand in hand? Well, we lived those magical moments at Ice Station Valencia during any of our daily public sessions. The Ice Station Coffee Club, our Monday to Friday noontime skate for adults only, is a great place to socialize while getting in healthy ice skating exercise. For beginners, there's a free skating lesson every Tuesday and Thursday. Ice Station, across the street from Valencia High. Call 775-8686 or check icestation.net for ice skating fun. The Santa Clarita Artists Association has a new gallery in downtown Newhall on 6th Street between Main and Railroad, right across from the Canyon Theater Guild. The gallery features our members' paintings, sculptures, and one-of-a-kind handcrafted gift items. Whether you're an art lover, buyer, 
or an artist wishing to join, visit our website at santaclavitaartist.org, come to our free monthly meetings at Barnes & Noble, or stop by the gallery. For upcoming events and exhibits, check us out at santaclavitaartist.org. We make visual art visible. Little Eye Leaders is the newest preschool in the Santa Clarita Valley. At Little Eye Leaders, our outstanding teachers lead with intellect, perspective, and heart. That means our programs provide a warm, nurturing atmosphere to meet the unique needs of each child. We believe that play is a powerful form of learning for young children. That's why our kids have every opportunity to learn through the magic and excitement of play. Parents, schedule a tour today by calling 303-0400 or online at littleeyeleaders.org. With the safe disposal of waste from our homes in the Santa Clarita Valley, Chiquita Canyon Landfill is able to create enough green energy to power 10,000 homes each year. So you can feel good that the waste from your home in the SCV is helping create a clean energy source and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Chiquita Canyon Landfill is our partner in sustainable living. Chiquita Canyon is helping lead the way to a greener future. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. Financial security will help you live the life you dream. Learn about financial power. All right, we're back on the show. Total Financial Solutions. This is your place for news, talk, and information. Your hometown station, KHTS. Thanks for staying with us. And if you're just joining us, thanks for being with us as we talk about how more than half of Americans that are um, in their 60s are saying they're going to have to delay retirement. And why are they going to have to delay retirement? Simply because, number one, they see their friends and maybe even their parents living longer. Mm Mm-hmm. So when we planned originally in our 30s or 40s or 50s and you're starting to save and you get into your 60s and 70s, you realize you're pretty healthy and, uh, oh, you had that little thing, but they took it out. You know, they had a little tumor or a little polyp or uh, basal cell and they were able to get it out and the cancer's gone. Those things didn't exist maybe when your parents were your age. And the treatments usually just led to people passing away and as opposed to, you know, you may have... 10 surgeries bef- you know, between age 60 and 70. However, you're in a position to probably live a lot longer than you originally planned, financially speaking. One of our relatives is actually contemplating some life-changing surgery. He's in his mid-80s. He, because he's mentally, he doesn't want to go anywhere. He says, hey, everything's okay. Yeah. I feel great otherwise, but I've got to take care of this little thing. It's, it's kind of a big thing, but I'll tell you what, this would be the end for him if he didn't have that opportunity in the, in the medical world to make that life-changing surgery. And we've heard this time and again that the cost to maintain our lives as we get older, right, the medical costs, uh, you're going to have to put in a few more dollars. There's going to be co-pays and and out-of-network and things where you're going to have to write checks. So you have to now just not cover your food, shelter, clothing, Mm -hmm. but food, shelter, clothing, insurance, and health care. Right. Because that is now a higher expense. So I always say uh, save uh, you know, 150% more than what you think you need. So if you think you need a million, get to close to, you know, close to 1.5 million. I don't think we're going to see a lot of inflation, not over the next probably 10 or 20 years. The central banks, which are the, the entities that put money into the system all across the world, they're slowly taking money out of the system. And when they do that, there's less money and they're trying to combat inflation. So when there's less, uh, money, if you will. Mm-hmm. Interest rates go up, people stop borrowing, drives down interest, uh, drives down inflation. As interest rates are supposed to uh, stay low, and if they flood the market with money like they've done, we should start to see higher inflation. Now, you know, go to, a, go to lunch. Jeff, we used to go to lunch. We used to go to breakfast. And breakfast was $5 a person, $7 maybe. Mm-hmm. Sure. Right. Lunch was seven, maybe ten dollars. I mean, if you got a drink and chips, right, it was ten bucks. Yeah. Today, I went to, to breakfast with a friend of ours. I think we paid thirty bucks, <laughs> thirty dollars. And of course, you know, a lot of these social justice, which is by the way a scam. By the way, if you ever have any questions, send me a letter. I'll tell you how that's a big big trick. Social justice. Who? Who? Everybody does social justice. What a what a 
It's all a trick, man. It's all a trick to leave power from you and have it go to them. All of a sudden, they're charging. I, we, were <laughs> we were eating in, I think it was uh, San Francisco. And they said, we have a health care administrative tax. I said, what the heck is this? Oh, it was an extra 5%. What, what do you mean? I'm paying 5% more? Well, yeah, it's, it's, to, it's so that we can get health care. I said, why don't you have health care? They said, well, because it's expensive. I said, go get a different job. <laughs> well, go get a job with health care. I, I don't know what to tell you. Nobody's t making you be a food server. It's not, you know, Russia where that, that's the box that you check. And when you're in eighth grade, they separate the gymnasts from the engineers and you landed in the food server line. Right? So you're visiting a city in which you do not live and you had to pay an extra tax on breakfast. So raise your hand, keeping one hand on the steering wheel, if you think I tipped less. Uh, yeah. And I am a very generous tipper, you guys. But they took away the volunteer part and made it mandatory. And I thought, well, one, I didn't tell you all to live in San Francisco. Yeah. Take a look at all the taxes that we pay in California. Take a look at all the taxes in San Francisco. Take a look at the taxes in L.A. There's a reason my business is not located in Los Angeles. Because did you know that they charge a business tax? There's an income tax for doing business in Los Angeles. The state of California charges me $200 per year per employee. Everybody here at the radio station, if you go on the books for one day, the state of California has to uh, charges $200 per employee hmm. so that it can help pay its debt. Two years ago, it was 150. Last year, it was 175. This year, it's 200. Why do you think that Nestle moved? Why do you think Toyota moved? Frito-Lay, Pepsi, and on and on. Yeah, multiply that by thousands of employees. Tesla. Can we go on and on? They moved mm -hmm. their gigafactory. They didn't put it. You really think Amazon is going to locate in the state of California? Who was it? <laughs> We're in Playa del Rey. We have great employees. We have access to an airport. Oh, my gosh. Hold your breath. After watching what just happened in, S in Seattle, they just taxed businesses a head tax, H-E-A-D. In other words, if they work for you, you have to pay an extra tax that goes to the city. That's supposed to help homeless people. They've already squandered the money that they've received. So if you're going to retire, you have to plan, not so much for inflation. I don't think that's a huge problem. Maybe. You know, we'll see some. I think the problem is going to be, depending on where you live, you may end up having to pay an enormous amount of taxes. The goal is the, state, the progressives and the liberals in the state of California is to drive taxation up to 50-plus percent, like Sweden, like Norway. And it's to keep this amb ambiguous line. You heard me say how, how Wall Street tries to trick you with percentages. One yep. percent. It's only one percent. One and a half. It's only one and a half. You don't spend percentages. You spend dollars. The state of California does the same thing. Hey, listen, we're only going to charge you 13% in taxes. <laughs> 13. And income. Oh, wait, gasoline tax. If you're retired and you're still going to drive a car, you're going to pay taxes whether you work or not. We just uh, got back from a, a conference I was in Phoenix last week for a couple of days. They were all excited because gasoline just crossed over $3 a gallon. It's like $3 and one cent or something. <laughs> I said, what was it before? $289, $285. And then, you know, we had some sort of thing and whatever it was, and it went up. So everybody's protesting. And <laughs> I'm like, California, it's almost $4 a gallon. There's nothing changing. It's pretty incredible. I mean, I remember at one point, maybe it was. 15 years ago or so, gas was almost $5. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, and I had to put premium in a car that I had, and I remember I paid four ninety nine. and I thought, oh, well, this is the end of driving. You know, as a young young man and have, uh, you know, a family to support, I thought, gosh, how can, how can anybody get along like this? Do you remember when they were blaming President Bush? It's your oil, you from that's Texas, right. and it's all about oil. That's why yeah. you invaded Iraq. Yeah. It's about oil. And then when President Obama was in, they're like, la, 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 la. <laughs> We're not talking about oil anymore. It's not about oil. That's right. Gas prices went up to four or five five dollars a gallon, and nobody blamed President Obama. No. Nobody blamed Governor Brown. That's the disingenuousness 
some will call it dishonesty of those in the political majority in this state. If you're going to be angry about something and you've got a reason for it, I'm all for it. Let's hear it. But you don't get to be angry one day because it's one per person you like or don't like, and then not it just, it's not fair, it's not right, it's not decent. And then you lose credibility. Right? I was watching a show the other day at the hotel, and it was a CNN, and all they did is bag on the president. And I thought, man, this is getting old. I'm just tired of I get it. There's a lot of things he does I'm not a fan of. Don't get me wrong. But you're telling me that you can't find one thing good about the North Koreans crossing the DMZ, shaking hands? Folks, that's earth-shattering. That is Nobel Peace Prize. President Obama got it before he even took office. <laughs> I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. I don't know. I'm not that guy. But come on, man. You don't call the game over before they even start to play. Well, when Mr. Peace was in office, did you see, you know, the radicals over there making any movement? No, I don't think so. You didn't. All you saw was Iran get the really close to the bomb, and the president sent over. Finally, he had to admit it. One hundred and ninety billion dollars in various 747s, in pallets of cash, gold, and euros, and Swiss francs. Hmm. You guys, why aren't you upset about that? He could have used that money to fix the homeless problem. $190 billion. He could have got California out of debt. $190 billion. billion he, he could have put the, inter international, the uh, interstate railroads uh, and uh, roads and, and bridges. He could have repaired those. Yeah. And he gave it to Iran. And he bought their, their participation in some deal. And they still didn't release the three hostages we have over there. You guys, when are you going to be upset? You're so colorblind. That's all you see is color. All you see is race. Why don't you see actions once in a while? You think you're going to retire and life is going to be the same. I'm telling you, it's not getting any easier. You have to protect your money. I don't know what's going to happen with the market. Experts are saying, I, I told you on the last show, uh, Guggenheim and BlackRock, two folks that I happened to speak at a conference, two different conferences I was at this, this year. They both say expect problems in 2019 at the end or 2020 beginning. Now, it was funny because somebody asked a question, well, what do you think the tax cuts, were those positive or negative? And he said what the tax cuts did is it delayed the recession, delayed market correction, and possibly will make it worse. Right? So do you understand that th this is not a one-way street. These guys just look at numbers. They don't care politically. Well, and I think it's just a, a testament to what we've seen kind of all across the board, whether it's statutorily or federally. We just keep pushing problems off until they absolutely have to be dealt with. And if you deal with it now, I mean, maybe it's a really bad sting. I don't know. But that versus a big blow later, I don't know. We, we've seen what a big market correction can do to people's retirement, to their lifestyles. Uh, we've seen what inflation does. We've seen what high taxes do. Why not deal with it today? If the dishonest media will go through and cover school shootings, then why don't they cover the stabbings? Hmm. You realize a knife doesn't have to be reloaded. You don't even have to be accurate with a knife. Yeah. With a bullet, once it leaves, uh, listen, I'm a, a black belt in martial arts. I'm a Los Angeles police officer, retired. I was always more afraid of a knife than a gun because eventually a gun is over, right? Three bullet, bullets, 10, 20, whatever it is, it's done. Take a look at the, the folks. There, there's a video I saw. And I want to say it's Malaysia where eight or ten police officers and there was a guy with a knife. I want to say it was a machete or at least a longer knife. I think he killed 15 people. They were surrounding him. They all had guns. That's how fast. You don't even have to be accurate. So if you're that worried about people, students, kids being killed, then have an honest conversation about mental illness. Many of you are pushing in California and other states to have 16-year-olds have the right to vote. If you think they're that smart, then you better give them alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, guns. If you think, give them the right to drive at 15. You can't tell me they're smart enough to vote, but their minds are not mature enough to be convicted of a crime at age 17 and sentenced to death like an adult. 
You gave them adult powers here. Why is it that you have some sort of provision that their mind is not mature at 17, but you can give them the right to vote, but you can't give them the right to buy alcohol or cigarettes or buy a gun until 21? What do you, Have some integrity with the way you... Listen, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm pointing out something that's inconsistent. And your family has to make a decision. Many of you are not going to retire in the liberal states. Take a look at howmoneywalks.com. Simple enough. I don't get paid on the website. I don't even know who runs the website. But they take IRS migration data. That means this year you filed your taxes in 91342. Next year you filed your taxes in 7610, whatever it is. They don't care. The federal government doesn't care. You pay the same tax in the federal government wherever you live. They said, this income was coming to this person in this state. Now it's coming to this person in this state, or in this case, zip codes. And then it takes the data. You scroll down. You click on the right. You'll see a little map. And it will tell you where the dollars are going or coming from. And you will see people are leaving, both retirees and otherwise, the high-tax states of the West, the Northeast, Illinois, Massachusetts, any place you see the, the far-left liberal uh, philosophies, Michigan, and they're leaving. And where are they going? To the low-tax, the conservative states. So I'm, I'm not a fan of one or the other. I'm telling you that's what's happening with money. Many of you will not retire in the state of California. The first thing out of your mouth is what, weather? Of course not. The weather's amazing here. First thing out of your mouth. Do you know how much it costs to live here? Now you tell me why that's right. Why I grew up born and raised in, in Hollywood, born in Hollywood, lived in San Fernando Valley my whole life until I uh, moved out here as an adult. You tell me why. It's okay for the Democrat politicians to chase me and you out of this state. This was your home. Why is it okay for them to do that? They're not going to retire in California. Quietly talk to them. Do a background check on some of them. See where they're buying their houses. See where their, quote, vacation properties are. So the moment they collect their state pension, where do they go? Boom, they're gone. Someone's got to watch out for you. You better take care of you and your family. We're going to come back, wrap this hour of the program up. We've got some interesting news on why people are saving less money now. Bet you're going to be surprised when we come back. On your place for news, talk, and information, I'm Eric Hallaby. That's Jeff Gerard. On your place for news, talk, and information, this is your hometown station, KHTS. You worry because your mom and dad aren't as active and are finding it more challenging to live on their own. The answer? Premier Assisted Living Community, Oakmont of Santa Clarita, now leasing. Located on Newhall Ranch Road, Oakmont of Santa Clarita, bringing comfort and luxury to assisted living. Your parents can enjoy five-star amenities and panoramic views in a world-class community. No other assisted living community has this kind of luxury and amenities in our valley. Visit oakmontofsantaclarita.com. Visiting Angels is looking for quality caregivers and companions to join our growing team of compassionate, caring people providing care and assistance to Santa Clarita seniors. Our Angels help seniors with activities such as meal preparation, light housekeeping, personal care, and running errands. Visiting Angels takes pride in offering competitive wages, benefits, paid training, and flexible schedules. We have clients throughout Santa Clarita so you can work close to home. Details at visitingangels.com forward slash Santa Clarita. America's Choice in Home Care. At Discovery Cube Los Angeles, every day is an adventure. LA's newest science center brings education to life, and let's guess climb on a rock wall, soar over California in a simulated helicopter, or score a goal against an LA Kings hockey player. It's like a theme park for the mind. And beginning May 26th, take a bite out of Dino Summer with your prehistoric past to the new Dinosaurs Around the World exhibit. All at Discovery Cube Los Angeles. Get your tickets now at la.discoverycube.org. If you're in danger of losing your home to foreclosure, you need an expert. Hi, I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty. I've helped hundreds of Santa Clarita residents save their homes completely for free. I've got just over 20 years experience and a loan modification success rate of over 80%. I can negotiate better terms with your bank and I can save your home from foreclosure. And again, we do this completely for free. So if you're in any danger, please call me today at 661-714-1400. That number again is 661-714-1400. I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty. And I'll be happy to help you save your home for free. Santa Clarita. 
Regina's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. Financial security will help you live the life you dream. Hey, welcome back to the show. Total Financial Hour. I'm Eric Hallaby. Thanks for being with us as we talk about your family's finances. We're wrapping up this shower, this hour with uh, the shower, this hour with uh, why are people saving less money? You know, a lot of American consumers have, uh, you know, we have a lot of things we can spend money on. Do you understand how blessed, how fortunate we are yeah. to have so many yeah. things we can spend money on in time, especially living in California? You know, a lot of times when you're living in California, y- there's just so much to do between the outdoor and the social uh, settings and the, the Oh, everything in between theater and, and uh, what? Why aren't we saving money? Well, I think it's because confidence is up amongst consumers and everything feels abundant and we're making more money and everything's going great. So what are we doing? We're spending more. And we're delaying the savings part of our financial well-being, which it has to be, guys, you have to, it has to be an absolute cost to yourself. You have to treat savings like a bill. It has to be one of your... It has to be automatic. Ex- yeah, automatic yeah. like an expense. If you're saving money each and every month and it's coming out of your paycheck and going into your company retirement account, it's coming out of your checking account and going into a savings account for emergencies, those kinds of things make all the difference in the world because ultimately it's that money that you're going to need on uh, need to rely on when you're retired That's and right. or if there's an emergency or medical or you're delayed in, in that uh, pay raise or promotion you've been planning on. Well, and if you take a look at the difference between starting saving in your 20s or even your 30s versus waiting to save any amount of money or of any significance until your 50s or 60s. And when people say, gosh, I, I want to retire someday. Now that horizon's getting even closer. Maybe it's age 65 or 70 is your goal. And then someone says, oh my gosh, I've got to really get going. And they start saving a lot of money. It's not the same. You have to put in more. You have to earn a greater rate of return. And you have to take out less and wait longer. So the earlier you do this, I mean, this is kind of a moot point for folks that are listening that are already in their 50s or 60s, but if you can encourage somebody, whether it's your, your kids, your neighbors, anybody, to save earlier, shed some of that knowledge and wisdom on them, saving earlier, that's always the answer. For a lot of Americans, trying to save money and set aside dollars uh, is often uh, too little too late. By the time a crisis is around, yeah. they're starting to look and see, oh, gosh, what do I do? Well, that by that time, they're laid off or they're, they start to see a turn. And it's difficult to save big dollars in a short period of time. So that's why that consistency that Jeff is talking about, that's why that really matters. Think of it like this. About 44%, that's less than half of Americans, couldn't pay $400 in cash right now. There's an emergency, $400. Hmm. Another study did uh, right around the same time, you're looking at only about 40%, so about the same amount, had $1,000 or more in their accounts for an emergency. Everybody else had to go to credit card debt. Now, okay, you might say, well, that's my plan. I like the debt. I I like the miles. I like the discounts, the the benefits. Well, think about this. We had a client. She was an actor, uh, actress, I guess. And he worked on a, he worked in advertising. Okay. Mm -hmm. So between the two of them, they made a lot of money. And, you know, in some years, some months, her income was higher, right? It depends on what show she was picked on or what commercial she was picked up on. Sure. And so the way they did their savings account, they did it through their home equity line. So they had a $150,000 home equity line. Mm -hmm. So in their mind, they didn't need to save because they could tap into that home equity line. So they wanted to take a vacation. They borrowed money from their home equity line. Mm -hmm. They paid it back over the next month or two, back down to $150,000. So their savings accounts were near zero. And they would constantly ebb and flow that home equity line. You remember this? Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember this. And then I get a call. So I tell them time and again, this is 2000, 2004, 5, 6, 7. I tell them time and again, guys, I think you need to start with the savings account. You better start putting aside money for emergencies, et cetera. Well, Eric, we've got this system down and it's great and, you know, whatever. So sure enough, 2008 comes. They get a letter from the bank. It says we have eliminated your home equity line of mm-hmm. credit. That means you no longer have it. Because banks were struggling. They didn't know what was happening with the real estate market. All of that, that home equity line of, of credit that's available out there is a liability. 
because they don't even know you. They never did another credit check on you. It's been sitting there in your account for a year. You could walk in tomorrow and buy a Ferrari for $100,000. <laughs> they don't right. care. It's open. It's a dollar figure that at any minute you can charge whatever you want on it. So they knew that. And they said, that's too much risk for us right now during the tumultuous times of 2007, 8. So they started closing down these home equity lines. So if you are one of those folks, so when we got a call, they panicked. They didn't know what to do. They almost lost their home. It was a, it was a horrible time because, of course, nobody was hiring actors and nobody was advertising as much. So all of their income, all of their savings, everything suffered. They had to pull money from their retirement account. So I think most Americans aren't saving today because times are good. And they forget what it's like when times were not so good. And then the further away we get away from that, the less detrimental it was in our minds, right? We don't remember all of the bad or how bad it was. We think, oh, well, you know what? We got through it. We're on this side of it. We're okay. You know how many people in 2010 and 11 were saving in safer investments, safer retirement accounts, safer places where they could earn reasonable returns but not go backwards? Many of them. Today, they go, well, listen, the market always goes up. Look how smart I am. Look at what I did. I say, well, you have to think twice, you guys, because if the market has gone up before and it's gone down before and right now we are up, what do you think is the next thing? I don't know, but I can only tell you that most people are expecting a correction in the next 12 to 18 months. Well, it's kind of like the old saying, what goes up must come down. And we've seen time and again the experts talking about uh, this impending correction that's going to come. And it could be in any one market. There's not one market. There are many out there. And you think being diversified amongst all of those different places, well, they're kind of all in the same type of environment. So you have to really think, can I get out of that and find something else that is not correlated, not going to do the same, behave the same way when the financial condition changes in the country? You know, a lady this morning said, you know, Eric, in 2000, I'm good. I've got it. I've got a great financial person this morning. Uh, when I talked with her, she said, my financial person, I only lost, I think she said 10% or something. <laughs> so good? Good that you paid a fee and lost? Why, why is that okay? You want safer retirement choices? That's what we're all about. 888-99-RETIRE. 888-99-RETIRE. That's my office number. It's a way for you to get a hold of us. We have uh, some uh, different events coming up. You're welcome to attend all sorts of things, uh, including a a luncheon with Larry Elder uh, popping in, or a dinner, I should say. If you have any questions, give us a call at 888-99-RETIRE. I'm Eric Hallaby, and that's Jeff Gerard. You have a, a concern or a comment, you can also go to our hometown station site, click on Total Financial Solutions, and send us an email. We often uh, bring it up in the show. That's where we get a lot of our content, your questions, your concerns, and that's what we're all about. 888-99-RETIRE, 888-99. 99 retire. That's Jeff Gerard. I'm Eric Hallaby. Thanks for joining us. Kate.